All right, think about this, guys. If you've been using R410A for the last 25 years and you feel comfortable with it in your van and working with it, but you're not comfortable with A2Ls, think about this. Half of 410A is R32, which is an A2L refrigerant that's going to be used in comfort cooling. So I have Jesse Stewart from Navac with us, and he's going to explain that in this podcast. He's going to talk about A2Ls and tool requirements when it comes to vacuum pumps and recovery machines. Now, there's going to be a visual aspect of this. If you're driving in your truck, you might not see it. Uh, he does a good job of explaining this. But if you want to see the visual aspect, you can hop over to the HVAC Know It All YouTube channel. You can subscribe there and watch Jesse talk about this on camera as well. So let's get to it, guys. This is the HVAC Know It All podcast. I'm your host, Gary McCready. As an HVAC contractor, we need to be insured. And it makes a lot of sense to have the same insurance company look after all our needs. Lambert Insurance Services has been protecting HVAC contractors since 2009. From general liability to workers' comp, bonding, commercial auto, and more, they've got you covered. Call Lambert Insurance Services for a free quote at 801-937-7030. All right, Jesse. So for the audience listening at home, if you're driving in your truck, we may put this in into the audio version as well, uh, but this is going to be a lot of visual stuff. So you might have to go to YouTube or watch some of the stuff on Instagram or TikTok or LinkedIn, where, wherever it might land. So Jesse, A2Ls, it seems to be something that some people are not fully up to date on, fully educated on. Some people have fear of it. Some people think it's not that big of a deal. So Let's get your take, first of all, on the whole change to A2Ls, and we'll get into some some tools, some like tool talk and fittings and hoses and all that. So really quick regarding the A2Ls, uh, just like you mentioned, there's a lot of fear involved with it because unfortunately, there are some people who believe everything that you read on the internet is true, and yeah. sadly, that's not the case. That being said, what you're going to find is that this transition from, we'll say, R14A to the A2L refrigerants is not going to be that different. In fact, the only thing that really changes is now best practices are no longer recommendation. In fact, fun fact for everyone who says, oh, well, that's such dangerous. I'm not going to work around it. You've been working around it this entire time and didn't even know it. R410A actually consists of 50% R32, which is one of these acceptable low GWP refrigerant replacements. But it takes a perfect storm to get these refrigerants to ignite or mm -hmm. become volatile, have a volatile chemical reaction. So don't believe that it's just as simple as a small spark with a small concentration. It takes the perfect amount of gas, air, and an ignition source to get these to actually ignite and then burn. In fact, if you want to know more on that, that can be a conversation that we can go into great detail on, or I do training sessions all over the world. You might find me in one of your local distributors. Now, I've seen when we did our natural gas, they call it a, a, a G1 course. That is the, the highest level of um, gas fitting uh, or gas technician you can take here in Ontario and Canada. And they show us a, a video of a building and how much natural gas needs to be in that building envelope, like how much of a concentration it needs in order to ignite that gas in that home or just it was basically a wooden shack is what it is in the middle of nowhere and they made it explode but the amount of gas needed was quite substantial to make it blow up and with the a2ls i've seen videos of people with a hose they turn the tank on and they have a lighter on the other end and nothing's happening right uh so it blows the flame out <laughs> yeah it blows the flame out yeah correct no and that that's the biggest problem with the whole our generation of technician has the ability to be the best there ever was because we have the internet in our back pocket. Yep. But unfortunately, not every source on the internet is a reputable source. And some of these forums and groups or whatever you may be in that's attempting to help you with information, unfortunately, some of that information might not be accurate. Um, again, don't read everything that, or don't believe everything that you read on the internet because it's not all entirely true. There's videos of guys who are wearing full fire retardant clothing that they're saying this is going to be HVAC techs come 2025. And I can assure you that's the furthest thing from the <laughs> truth. In fact, the one video, and I won't go into detail in it, but if you know what I'm talking about, where someone was working on something, they're there one second, they're not the next. That's not an A2L restriction. Yeah. So there's going to be some nice memes going around. 
with uh with oh, they're Hydro already refrigerants. going around man oh the i know i know but there's, there's, there's gonna be a lot more <laughs> like i said it has the potential to be the best generation of technician but only if you're using information from a reputable source yeah 100 percent agree so gary since we start talking about a2l let's go ahead and talk about number one question that i hear am i gonna have to buy all new tools to work on this equipment here's the thing if you're using another manufacturer i can't speak on that yeah. You'll have to reach out to your manufacturer. But if you're using anything from NAVAC, I can personally attest to the fact that if you're using anything that we've produced, at least within the last five years or sometimes longer than that, it's inherently A2L compliant. Uh, one exception to that rule is our older recovery machine, the NRRD. That one is not listed as A2L compliant currently. But what exactly makes a tool A2L compliant? Um, a lot of people will give you a bunch of fluff words, but here's the reality. You want a brushless DC motor. Yep. You want soft contacts for electrical terminations of power switches. Because if you have a hard contact, it has the potential to produce an arc. Mm -hmm. You want all electrical terminations covered in a resin or insulated. That way, in the event, if an electrical termination comes loose, it doesn't produce an arc or a spark if it's exposed to a flammable gas. And then last but not least... Do you want the inclusion of a fan? And when we say that, we're referring mainly to our recovery machine. And this is where the show and tell aspect's really going to kick in here. This is our NR7. All right, so we actually released this at AHR this year. Now, fun fact for you, all of the equipment coming out from NAVAC, if you pay attention, actually has this right here, this A2L compatible sticker on it. But when I talk about that DC brushless motor and the fan, etc., you can't really see a whole lot using this as a visual. So instead, we'll use this one. Now, what this is, it's the exact same machine, the exact same equipment. It's just in a ceramic clear case so that you can see it. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on something for a quick second here. The one, you're looking at your DC brushless motor right here. And every electrical termination inside of this component is insulated. But more importantly, let's focus on what I said earlier about a fan, right? When we talk about A2L refrigerants, if this component had a catastrophic failure, let's say this inside of the leak, it wouldn't take a long time to exceed the lower flammability limit inside this small box. You could also have the perfect combination of oxygen in here if the occasion should arise. When we talk about the fan and an A2L compliant tool, if this thing did have a catastrophic failure or a leak, the fan's job is no longer just rejecting heat for the recovery process. It's to displace that concentrated gas and keep it below that lower flammability limit to make sure that we keep the contractor safe. Now, focusing on that again, we talked about the fan, but those electrical terminations, this machine is running when we're using it. So it's putting off some vibration. If you had a loose electrical termination, you could potentially exceed that lower flammability limit, and if it wasn't insulated or covered in a resin, that termination could shake and arc. That would be a source of ignition for a flammable refrigerant. Now, again, I need to stress that it takes a perfect scenario to get these to ignite, but it's better safe than sorry. And, of course, like I said in the very beginning, you have that DC brushless motor. That's a terrible glare. We're going to keep it right there. But when it comes to these tools and their compatibility, there are some gray areas. You want to make sure you're using compatible tools. So A2L compliant, that's for your vacuum pump and your recovery machine. Those are your two big players. Those are the ones you're going to see. When we talk about the recovery machine, the fan helps to displace any concentrated gas in the event of a failure. Electrical terminations to keep the contractor safe. Because, again, it wouldn't take long to exceed the lower flammability limit in here if the perfect amount of oxygen was present as well. Now, but you if, got a question. Yeah, I got a question. So if you have an older recovery machine from a, who knows when, like let's say it's 20 years old and it doesn't have the, the brushless technology, that's something that we don't recommend using for A2Ls? That is something we don't recommend using for A2L. Okay. I just want to clear that up. Yeah, and now if you go outside of that range, you can actually talk with ESCO. They did a podcast on it a while back. They say that you can actually apply the mitigation strategies that they use for these systems and still be able to use some components, but they still recommend always confirming with your manufacturer. Okay. So if you have something from NAVAC and you're not sure if it doesn't have that sticker on the side of it, all you have to do is reach out to us directly. 
All right. So when we talked about your two biggest hitters, when we're talking about A2L equipment, we talked about your recovery machine. The next one is your vacuum pump. Now, a lot of the same rules still apply here. We're still looking for a DC brushless motor. We're still looking for soft contact power switches. But the kicker there is that DC brushless motor, right? So here you got our four CFM battery operated vacuum pump. That's a DC motor. But then you have this right here, which is the MP7DP2. That's an AC driven vacuum pump. Now, I just told you that in order to be A2L compliant, you needed to have a DC driven vacuum pump. Yep. How is this one A2L compliant? So, Gary, you got any guesses before I go into it? Um, not really. Take us home, Jesse. I got you, man. So, when we built this, there was a generation of this pump before this one. When we built this, we took it back and we built it to where this vacuum pump is intrinsically safe. Okay. That's a really fancy way of saying that this thing has went through UL studies and back in Canada, C, I believe it's CSA. Is that right? So they went through safety procedures to make sure that this thing would be intrinsically safe. So the electrical components, everything inside of it's still insulated, covered in a resin, but it should never come into contact with a large concentration of that refrigerant. It should never be able to exceed that lower flammability limit. More importantly, as a fun fact, and I love to point this out, should your vacuum pump ever be coming into a large concentration of refrigerant? No, it shouldn't. If you said yes, you might be doing your job wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a trade-off, though. So while this one is AC-driven, and it's actually cheaper than some of the other options that are out there, at least produced from us, the trade-off is it's heavy. This one is significantly heavier than some of the other options. So then the eight, the four, the two. In addition to that, really quick, allow me to cover this. You can see our lovely A2L recovery cylinder here. We just touched on this. A2L refrigerants still have to be recovered. You cannot yep. vent A2L mm -hmm. refrigerants. On top of that, here in the U.S., there's actually a little bit of a manufacturing issue with those new cylinders. And that issue is that they can't produce enough of them yet. So as of today, current recovery cylinders can be used for A2O refrigerants with the exception it needs to be a virgin cylinder, so nothing else should have been recovered into it. All right. You need to put some form of a marker or band, or in our case, paint it red, to make sure that we know what's inside of that cylinder. And whose responsibility is that if you get a cylinder that is not an a2l cylinder whose responsibility is it to mark it and make sure it's virgin is that the manufacturer of the cylinder so as of today it falls on the contractor to make sure it's a virgin cylinder so if okay. you picked up a cylinder from a distributor i ideally it should be a virgin cylinder right out of the gate but what i'm getting at for the contractors is you can't just pull a vacuum on the recovery cylinder that you're currently using and then say it's a virgin cylinder it has to be a virgin cylinder straight from a distributor or never have had anything in it if it's sitting in your warehouse at your contractor. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I know the cylinders that are recovery cylinders, we take them back and they get cleaned, but there's other refrigerants that have been in them previously. They just get cleaned, maybe a new valve, valving assembly on it, and that's it. It's back out into the wild. So... And, and that right there, so if it is cleaned, it gets a new valve put on it from the distributor, wherever you took it, that would be considered a virgin cylinder. That's a fresh cylinder. The reason that they're having a manufacturing issue with the recovery cylinders is, Gary, stop me if you know what I'm going to say. The reason they're having an issue with A2L cylinders manufacturing? Manufactured? Yes. So they can't manufacture well, enough? They can't manufacture enough because there's something different about these cylinders. Because of the, the connection, the left-handed thread. They are left-handed thread. So at yeah. minimum, you would need an adapter in order to access these refrigerants. Yeah. Now, Gary, you and I both know technicians. This is a relatively small part, small component, right? Mm hmm I can see a lot of technicians losing these throughout the years, especially as small as they are. And it can go as simple as solve the problem by leaving it on the tank. But the problem is, is if you're using a existing recovery tank, like we just talked about, there's a good chance that you may forget to take the adapter off. Mm -hmm. Now, we came up with a solution. Instead of just selling an adapter. Just before you say that, I did make a video recently 
of saying that I thought to me anyway, the best way of doing it was because I've worked on hundred pound cylinders in the past and it comes with a fitting, an adapter. You got to put it on there and I leave it on there. I don't take it off. I leave it on there until it's ready to come off. And then I take it back to the uh, supplier if it's empty, so on and so forth. Then I take my, my fitting off. So my recommendation was to leave the fitting on. Then I'm going to let you say what you were going to say. Just because sticking it on a, a hose and then trying to twist the hose on with the, with the fitting already on it. So uh, that was my recommendation, leaving it on the tank. But I, I want to hear your input on this. Well, so no, my input on it is, yes, you can leave it on the tank. That would be a lot easier than actually threading it onto the hose and leaving it there because you're mm -hmm. going to try to turn against yourself. You're going to end up having problems. Yeah. But my concern is them losing that fitting and then going to their boss and they're saying, well, we got to order a bunch of them. Not saying that you'll lose it, Gary, but I know technicians oh, lose that it. just like you and I dealt with those 100-pound cylinders. And every yeah. time we got a new one, we had to get more fittings because they kept leaving them on the tank and taking them back to the distributor. Yeah. Our solution to that was our NH5L. Now, what's cool about this, you'll need a reverse threaded adapter in order to use your existing manifold set. Well, if you take our hose and replace your yellow service hose with it, what it does, you have a right-hand thread and that attaches to your manifold itself, and you have the left-hand thread that attaches to the cylinder. This way, it's a little bit harder to lose an entire five-foot hose. Oh, yeah, of versus course. Versus losing an adapter. Now, in addition, uh, a lot of people ask, well, how can we determine that this is the A2L hose? Well, one, it's a quarter-inch hose. The other orange hoses that we make, they're three-eighths, and we call those our recovery hoses. In addition, if you look, the knurling on the service end has a mm -hmm. split ring to it. Mm -hmm. That's how we identify this as our A2L hose. Now, some people, when, when I did make that video about the fitting that you guys have, a lot of techs were saying that the, the fitting already comes with the tank. But this might play back into what you were saying with the tanks not being made with the, the fitting on it. So I'm not sure. So I was getting kind of different feedback on that. Do you have anything, any, any input on that? So my feedback on it as of right now, and again, I've traveled quite a bit all over the country here, and I've actually been in Toronto and a few other places up in Canada. I haven't seen any of the tanks that actually come with an adapter. And just so I understand, that's what you're hearing? Yeah. I some A couple people said, and I don't remember what platform it was on, that the adapter came with the tank. So I don't know if certain manufacturers or even maybe certain suppliers are giving mm -hmm. the fittings out maybe with, with their tanks. I, I'm not and, really sure. And that most likely is the case. It's probably down to either the manufacturer or distributor level at their discretion. But everywhere mm -hmm. I've been so far, none of the tanks that are currently coming out come with an adapter. Okay, cool. But if there are other situations or other circumstances, I'd love to hear about it. And I know Gary would too. That's the cool thing about, at least for me, this whole A2L transition. One, the codes and regulations, they seem like they're getting updated almost weekly, sometimes yeah. daily. Yeah. <laughs> you hear different things from all over. And it's just a really exciting time to be in our industry because while we've seen phase downs and phase outs before, this is kind of the most aggressive phase down and aggressive change that we've ever seen in this industry. Not saying that a lot changes, but it's something completely new to us. And if you've been in this industry long enough, you've seen this happen time and time again. 22 to 410A, before that you are R11, all these different refrigerants phased out. 